Hey, just a bit of housekeeping before we jump into the meat of this video. Uh, this is not sponsored at all, but it wouldn't have happened without my friends at eacoustics.com who helped facilitate the delivery of these products you're about to see in this video. So for all things home audio, gadgets, computers, wearables, emerging tech, head over to their website for all the latest news on your favorite brands and products. All right, let's get started. It's been a mission of mine ever since we moved into this house over a year ago to try and find a way to have a modest home theater system that still knocks my socks off. Despite the fact that this living room in particular is terrible for a home theater system with these gigantic sliding doors to one side, this big old entry space over here, no dividing line between the living room and the kitchen, and lastly, the TV above the fireplace. And yeah, I get it. I've already gotten plenty of comments referring to the subreddit RTV Too High. You're not original. That dead horse has been beaten enough. But it's literally the only place I could put it. I can't put it on this wall because it's in the way of foot traffic going to the other side of the house where the bedrooms and office are. I can't put it here because, duh. And I can't put it around this area because, other duh. So in the end, I knew I needed a more traditional home theater setup consisting of an AVR with pre-out so that I could connect an external amp, a compact yet powerful sub in the corner, and most importantly, my wife's approval. I'll leave the big boy stuff to my dedicated home theater. So in this video, which will be part one of three, just FYI, we're gonna be focusing on the passive soundbar, a soundbar that still has to be powered by an AVR and connected with speaker wire. And one particular company kept calling to me, Golden Ear, and here's why. Good girl. Well, going back to this RTV2 high example, between the fireplace mantle and the bottom of this TV here, it's only slightly more than five inches. Not that much space, right? But if I found a soundbar that was under five inches, but could also span the distance of our 75 inch Samsung frame TV, that would be perfect. If I reviewed it and I loved it, I could then potentially snake some speaker wire coming out from behind this cabinet into the wall, up into the attic, down this wall and out here, then being connected to the soundbar itself. So that way the speaker wire is nice and hidden behind the soundbar. But while I was reviewing the soundbar, I basically just had some speaker wire just kind of draped and hanging down and going back behind this cabinet. Not the prettiest, but I was just reviewing it, so it's all good. And the reason I wanted to get in touch with Golden Ear was this. the Super Cinema 3D Array XL, a passive three channel soundbar that spans 62.1 inches. Now the Samsung Frame TV is 75 inches diagonally, but across it is actually 66 inches. So with this being 62.1 inches in width, it almost spans the entire length of the TV. For a soundbar, that's really impressive. The other reason I had my eye on this particular soundbar was that it can handle up to an astounding 300 watts per channel. And in a living room this size, you need lots of power to push those air molecules all the way to my listening position, which is about 13 feet away from the TV. But also being able to handle that much power means so much headroom. So it's a truly cinematic experience with quiet parts being real quiet and loud parts getting real loud. And the Super Cinema XL is one of the very few that I found in my research, at least here in North America, that can handle power of that magnitude. Frequency response was another factor in my research because I didn't want it to sound too flat or anemic. And the Super Cinema XL can go down to 80 hertz and all the way up to 25 kilohertz. 80 hertz is not the most ideal because you're gonna to wanna to set the crossover to about 100 hertz, which is higher than I would normally like. But 80 hertz is still far better than a lot of the competition out there. So with that being said, let's take a look at some of the other offerings in that same price point. Monitor Audio SB4 handles only up to 80 watts per channel. Ugh, 
frequency response dips down to 70 Hz, which is a little better than the Super Cinema XL. Okay. Sensitivity is 87 decibels with a nominal impedance of 8 ohms, which isn't the best. And it is just as long as the Super Cinema XL, but it's almost 6 inches tall, so that would cover up the very bottom of the TV. Dang. There's the DevTech 3C75. Again, only handles up to 80 watts per channel and a frequency response dipping down to only 120 hertz. What? It's basically 66 inches long, so that's cool, but it's also just over 6 inches tall, so that's no good in my case. And finally, we have the Klipsch Heritage Bar. All right, this one can also handle up to 300 watts per channel. Cool. But, oh man, frequency response only dips down to 120 hertz. Dang. And it's only just under 50 inches long and over 6 inches tall. Bummer. So, over the last few weeks, the Super Cinema XL has been hooked up to this Marantz Cinema 70S in this cabinet right here. At first, I had it going to the XPA5 amp from Emotiva, but it proved to be just too gigantic, like physically large, because it was as big as both of these components combined. So then I had to take this power conditioner and put it up over here and it was just out in the open and not clean lines anymore. So yeah, just way too big. So now I can finally fit the PowerQuest 707 power conditioner down here. Right here I have the Emotiva Basics A6 because I don't currently have an A5 on me. But that's what I was rocking over the past few weeks when I was reviewing the soundbar along with this Force Field 30 compact subwoofer also from Golden Ear. Okay, one thing to note about this soundbar is that you actually don't want to run auto room correction. According to Golden Ear themselves, their passive soundbars incorporate special 3D imaging optimization technology to achieve lifelike, wide, deep 3D realism with virtually no acoustic coloration. The inherent problem with most soundbars is that because they are contained in a, such a small form factor with speakers being pretty close together, you're going to get a lot of bleed and crosstalk, which muddies up the sound stage because we, as humans, hear with our two ears on either side of our head. So to combat this, Golden Ear had designed a soundbar that has your typical left, center, and right speakers with the addition of these drivers here, which effectively cancel out the crosstalk distortion between the left and right speakers. So the result is a bar with truly separated sound that extends way beyond the footprint of the bar itself. But what was really impressive to me is when I turned on Atmos height virtualization in the Marantz menu system, and that opened up the soundstage even more. So it took a really modest 3.1 system and made it sound huge easily filling up this entire living room. Now, let's not kid ourselves. You'll obviously be getting a more pronounced surround sound effect if you had actual speakers behind the couch, but for what it's worth, the soundbar by itself did an amazing job. Focusing on the physical design once again, this bar has a total of eight proprietary spider leg cast basket 4.5 inch base mid-range drivers with their unique multi-veined phase plugs, helping with that crosstalk cancellation, remember? In addition, for crystal clear highs, it sports three proprietary AMT style tweeters that Golden Ear call their high velocity folded ribbon tweeters, or HVFR tweeters. If you would rather not see the tweeters and drivers, it does have a magnetic removable grill. And the piano gloss black finish cabinet is made from aerospace grade extruded aluminum with marble powder infused baffle and end caps. There are two keyhole mounts on the rear, or you can mount it on a flat surface like I have with the included adjustable rear supports. The sensitivity rating is 91 decibels and it is 4 ohm nominal. So, like I said, it can handle a surprising amount of power given how sleek and thin it really is. The bar itself weighs 21 pounds or 9.5 kilograms, so you'll definitely want to find at least one stud to screw it into if mounting on a wall. But because of those specs and being able to handle up to 300 watts per channel and essentially being three speakers in one, it's not the cheapest coming in at $2,100 USD. But if you had never heard of Golden Ear until now, you'll be happy to know that their very unique speaker technology is implemented across their entire series of speakers. So they all have the same crosstalk eliminating technology, the HVFR tweeters, they even have monster tower speakers with built-in subwoofers like Definitive Technology has. 
If the XL in particular is too big, they do have a smaller version called the Super Cinema 3D Array X, or they have on-wall speakers if, say, you wanted to mount your speakers on the sides and below for three channels that way, in-ceiling speakers, which I'll get to in part three of this series, and more. But obviously, since this is my first foray into Golden Ear speakers, when given the option, I was like, yeah, give me your flagship. Show me what you got, right? But performance-wise, honestly, it's almost too good. I know, I know, you're probably rolling your eyes just with me saying that, but let me tell you a little story on what I mean about that. My daughters love the show Bluey on Disney+, Plus, right? Even though they're seven and nine years old, it's still such a great show with great lessons for kids, wonderful voice actors that are genuine and not over the top and annoying like a lot of other kid shows. Hell, even I like to watch Bluey with my kids because they do such a good job blurring the line between what's entertaining to kids and adults. Elon, why are you gushing over Bluey? Okay, okay, enough of that. You're right. But something strange happened when we watched Bluey for the first time with this soundbar in place. In the intro song, which is very well known by a lot of parents now, there was this kind of wishy-washy phasing effect going on. Or some might describe it as comb filtering, where you just kind of hear this like while the music is coming out. Like you can hear the frequencies kind of changing as it's playing, right? Not good. So much so that even one of my daughters commented on it. She's like, Daddy, why does the music suddenly sound weird? Even with all the other speakers or soundbars that I have reviewed in this living room in the past, I had never noticed that before. So just to make sure it wasn't something funky going on with my Marantz, I switched it with the Emotiva MC1 preamp. Still phasing issues. So I put the Cinema 70S back in and tweaked just a couple of things, not like over the top. And still, sure enough, there were some phasing issues during that intro. But here's the thing. It's just bluey. Every other TV show or movie we watch with this soundbar sounded spectacular. But even during some of the Bluey episodes, when music happens to start playing, again, there's some wishy-washy phasing stuff going on. So the only explanation I can think of is... So the only explanation I can think of is that it must be mixed that way. The other night we watched the first Incredibles movie, and honestly, that is one of the most dynamic Pixar movies out there, sound-wise. Well, honestly, both Incredibles movies, really, because Brad Bird, the director, is such a stickler for dynamic audio. And there were honestly moments that were startling. They were so dynamic because this system was firing on all cylinders. So yes, you could say that I am now a fan of Golden Ear speakers, which is honestly such a relief. For years, I was visiting their website, just dreaming of the day I could finally get my hands on one to review. And I can honestly report to you that they are as good in person as they are on paper. But I will tell you right now that this soundbar isn't 100% perfect, at least with what I've got going on here. For starters, my wife kind of changed her tune and decided, you know what, I don't really want anything on the mantle because it just kind of gets in the way. I mean, I get it. Without the soundbar here, it does look a lot cleaner. And having a soundbar here got in the way of decorating the mantle during certain holidays throughout the year, etc. But if you have a more traditional setup with a TV on an entertainment center and you put this soundbar below the TV, Perfect. Or if you have a TV mounted on the wall in a more ideal position, lower than this one, and you have space to mount this soundbar below the TV, go for it. But focusing on sound, I literally only have one gripe about it, and that's the frequency response. I'm not a huge fan of it only reaching down to 80 hertz. I'd love it if I could set the crossover to the THX recommended 80 hertz, but this would need to go down to 60 hertz, 65 at the most. I just personally enjoy my front soundstage to have enough bottom end by itself without the aid of a subwoofer. But don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that this soundbar sounded flat or tinny or anemic because I set the crossover to 100 hertz. No, paired with the Force Field 30 subwoofer, it still sounded spectacular because they just complement each other so well. 
but even their largest on-wall speaker, the SuperSat 60, goes down to 65 hertz, which is more in line with what I wanted. So if they somehow redesigned this soundbar to also go down to 65 hertz, or maybe even 60, no hesitation, I would say that this soundbar was perfect. It sounds that good. But with that being said, part two of this series will focus on this Force Field 30 subwoofer, a compact 8-inch subwoofer that, just like these speakers, have very unique technology built in that makes it perform way above its weight class, you could say. So stay tuned for that. So in the end, because of my extremely unique circumstances here in this living room, I will be sending this soundbar back but that doesn't mean it's not perfect for you. I'm sure there's plenty of you out there that would love to have the sleek, compact form factor of a soundbar with this much power, but also having the flexibility of being able to put it into your system with an AVR, so then you can tweak it and make any manual adjustments where a lot of other soundbars just don't have that capability built in. And also with it being a passive soundbar and having actual speaker wire hooked up to it, you can actually get a little more creative and hide those a little bit better than you could say a clunky power cord and an HDMI cable that has to go to your traditional powered soundbar. So if this kind of scenario sounds enticing to you, would I recommend the Super Cinema 3D Array XL? Absolutely. So with that being said, now it's your turn. Had you even heard of Gold in here before? Have I piqued your interest? Are you looking at their website right now? Would a passive soundbar be the way to go in your system? Or perhaps Golden Ear's more traditional cabinet speakers or on-wall or in-ceiling speakers? Let's start a conversation, people. As always, this world is crazy as it is, so it only makes sense to be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies, experience them with Golden Ear speakers. And of course, always be listening. And of course, always be listening. <laughs>